So I was employee number one of what has become Hangar 13. And really the, you know, the first couple of weeks were me alone trying to figure out, you know, how do I start recruiting? What are we going to be working on? And then within, you know, a couple of weeks of starting the opportunity to work on the Mafia franchise presented itself. And I really jumped at it. I mean, I saw it as a gift. There's obviously things the 2K already knew they wanted out of the game. Like, well, if we're going to do Mafia 3, let's make sure that we advance the, the time. We move it to a different era. You know, what's an exciting era? Well, the 60s. You know, setting it in our version in New Orleans was something that had already been broached. I came into it saying, okay, we know we want to build a great game. We want to build a, a strong studio and we want to build powerful proprietary tech that we know people will be able to use to build multiple games, right? So I was kind of looking at it from the outset of how, how do we achieve all, all three of those goals using Mafia 3 as, as the driver for that. Was Rod Ferguson involved in the founding of this studio? Yeah, we're not going to talk about, I, I can't talk about any other, you know, employees or people that maybe have come and gone. Rod's a great guy. I really wish him well and kind of his future endeavors, but, you know, he uh, hasn't had an impact on, on Mafia 3 and what we've done with Mafia 3 uh, and, and Hangar 13. So I arrived in uh, early 2014. At that time, we were actually in another hangar. I've been in a number of studios where I've kind of been involved, either in terms of expanding a studio or building one from, from the ground up. And it's something that I really enjoy doing. It's much more satisfying to kind of join um, a team in its very formative stages and actually then build it. It was almost like being able to go out and recruit, you know, like kind of the, the dream football team or something. You know, we know we need a star quarterback. Well, where do we want to draw that person from? Once you kind of bring the, the core together, you tend to find that, that people start referring people they've worked with before. And that for me is a really great way to hire people because it's an easier bet. Then because, you know, I knew some people at LucasArts, we were able to recruit some great people from LucasArts. We've been able to recruit from, you know, pretty much every major publisher and developer out there. And to be able to talk to the everybody on the team and find out what worked and didn't work on the last thing you worked on and how can we integrate that into our unique culture here, how we can make the studio stronger, how we can make games better. The most important phrase actually is never fill a seat because you have to. It's always better to be a bit under capacity than it is to have the wrong person in place because games teams, you know, it gets very intense and you have to be able to rely on everybody and it really is kind of a community and it has its own ecosystem. So as soon as you introduce the wrong person into that, it can be very, very damaging. There's a, a level of kind of grown upness, I'd say, on this team that I've not fully encountered before and it's kind of refreshing. I think fans are going to want to know, and I don't know if there's a simple answer to it, as far as just why isn't 2K Check developing this game? So, um, you know, we're, ver we're still working very closely with 2K Check. Uh, you know, 2K, a lot of the guys from 2K Check are now working here at Hangar 13. You know, I think a lot of it just had to do with, you know, where do we want to centralize the effort? And it made the most sense to have everything centralized here because, you know, the, the kind of creative production and, and tech leadership were all here. And again, I think because it's such an important franchise to 2K, being able to have that proximity to the publishing folks, I think was really important. So. Is it strange to have 2K right across the way from you guys? Does it kind of feel like the man's always looking over your shoulder <laughs> because of that? No, not at all, actually. it's um, Yes, it means they can kind of just walk in and collar me wherever I am, but you know, if I've not done anything wrong, then I shouldn't really be afraid of that. On the other hand, you know, the fact that we can just have a meeting or catch up with each other within 30 seconds of deciding to is actually really powerful and it gets rid of a lot of red tape and bureaucracy and, and communication problems and things like that. So actually having them right there is, is really good for us. Yeah, so Hangar 13, the name, um, it was a long time coming, right? You know, I, mean, I think we started exploring names from the day I started. We w wanted to use the term Hangar or, or harken back to the fact that we were founded at this former Air Force base. So there are, uh, if I'm correct, 10 Hangars and we're Hangar 13. That confuses a lot of people. Uh, I get mail addressed to Hangar 13 all the time and there's not, you know, there is no Hangar 13. And we thought that was kind of cool and, and kind of mysterious. Also, you know, if you think about it, you spent 13 years at LucasArts and a lot of the team worked on Star Wars 1313. Yeah, you know, we did. I, I, that's funny because none of us made that connection at the time. But also, um, you know, Hayden had this whole idea around kind of superstition and things, which you see in our logo with the black cat. And I'm a big fan of like rockabilly music or psychobilly music. So we wanted to like kind of draw on that a little bit. Or I personally did and make it look like a patch. And I don't know, it just felt kind of badass when we saw the logo for the first time. We're like, yeah, that's it. Let's go with that. I love it, actually. It's like I like the fact our logo is not kind of a traditional game dev logo. Or sort of like the, the anti-tech company. 
Does Megadeth's Hangar 18 ever come up? It does. So there's a bunch of guys on the team, myself included, that are, you know, we're metal fans at one point in time in our lives. But yeah, no, we, we talk about Megadeth all the time. Yeah, in fact, I was just going to lunch with Bill Harms the other day, and I think he had that playing on his, on his uh, mixtape. You know, at the end of the day though, and this is, I, I've told the team this a million times, the name is what you make it. I, as part of the early stages of production, organized um, this sort of two week offsite where we mapped out everything, like the game from beginning to end of how we wanted it to play out, who all the key characters are, what their motivations are, what will happen if you do this to this character. And all of that linkage forms this huge web structure. And it takes a lot of kind of prodding and poking to get it into a, into a shape where there aren't dead ends or kind of weird narrative arcs taking place. And we actually got to a point where we were really happy with it, which, you know, before we've even entered production, we know that we've solved that problem, which is a great position to be in. We take all of our design briefs and we actually print those out and we post them up on a wall, right? So people can just walk by and, and read them if they want and they get educated on something we're doing in the game. It's a very open culture. It's a very transparent culture. We encourage people to give feedback um, and to not let things simmer, which is a new studio. There are always endless problems to fix. Do the team leads talk a lot about how to stand out in the open world market? No, I mean, honestly, no. Like, I'm not saying we're not cognizant of it. I mean, that would be absurd. Like, obviously we play every other game that's released and we look at it and we look at what do they do well? What do they do not so well? What can we learn from this game? One of the big fears you always have with making these kind of games is if you think you've got a great idea and then you see someone beats you to it by a few months. And luckily we're at the point now where we're probably, hopefully, past that, that risk. We spend, 99% of our time obsessing about how do we make our game better and less about like what is everybody else doing because you can't like we'd go insane if we were second guessing what everybody else is doing because we just we don't know. Probably our next big internal target will be our kind of uh, feature complete and that's a really exciting point because at that point you sort of see the full particularly with an open world game uh, the kind of full ecosystem. Even though the game's you know, relatively early in development. Do you feel like you're in love with it yet? No, I, okay, so I, I've been in love, the honest answer is I've been in love with the game since the day we decided it was 1968 and our version of New Orleans. And game development's hard, so there are times you fall out of love with your game for sure, right? And then something happens and you go, oh no, I'm in it for the long haul, this game is awesome, right? And, and I love, I'm gonna get all choked up. I love seeing what the team does, like what the team can accomplish, right? There's somebody, you know, you hire somebody that you've never worked with before, and maybe they're a junior designer, they've shipped one other title, and then they come in and they spend a couple weeks on the project and they show you, hey, look, I, I just, I tuned this car, can you drive it? And you're like, oh my God, this car feels amazing. I'm talking about a very specific person on our team. It just makes you feel good about hiring the right people. And all I do is say, go that way, and then, they all go and then you're like, wow, I can't, I can't believe you guys got there and you did it in a way that I never expected. You know, it's hard sometimes. I mean, we work hard and there's no bones about it because we're building a big ambitious game. This don't concern you, son. Keep moving. Recently, obviously, we did our big demo at Gamescom and that was an amazing exercise for gelling everybody together because all of a sudden on screen, you've got this thing that everybody's really excited and happy about and you kind of look around and you're like, oh yeah, we did this as a team. That was very exciting because that's the point where I went from, you know, are we onto a good thing here? How are we doing to we're onto a good thing? You know, this is this is ours to lose at this point because I think that this is gonna be a great game. Video game industry can be a scary place at times. Yeah. Do you feel a lot of pressure uh, founding this new studio? It's a, oh, totally. I'd imagine it's a <laughs> yeah. lot of money being poured into this thing. Uh, yeah, you know, I feel pressure, absolutely. I, you know, I don't want to let Christoph down. I, you know, I don't want to let, you know, the team down. There are a lot of people who have joined the studio based on a vision that I've sold them and, and said, this is what we're going to do. And then there's the franchise. Like, there are people that love, love, love the franchise in ways that is sometimes hard to fathom. I, I don't want to let the fans of the franchise down. The temptation is to grow too fast. So I want us to keep calm and, and carry on if you, if you like. I want us to ultimately, hopefully, 
take on more projects. Will it be a disappointment to you if Mafia 3 is the big success that you hope it is? Yeah. And then it's like, well, Mafia 4, Mafia 5. If Mafia 3 is an enormous success, I don't mind being called the Mafia Studio. <laughs> you know, like that's a, that's a good thing for me. Being sort of associated with something which people love and which is super high quality, I think is, is a really great thing. It's where we all want to end up in our careers. It's sure, I'd love us to take on other projects as well so that we can do other stuff too. But I, you know, we're really, really passionate about, about Mafia. We're, we're huge fans and, and we're really enjoying making it. So no, I'm fine with that. It's totally unique. It's totally unique, right, in the industry to be able to to yeah, build the studio that we want to build, to be able to build the game we want to build, to be given this gift of this franchise, to be able to hire the people that we need to hire and want to hire. And so this is a once in a lifetime for sure.